there's a lot of students who live here. Yeah, I mean, very few people live on campus. So this is the house? Yeah, this that is the house. That ended up where? Um, well, it ended up on Blacktivists, a massive social media page uh, completely taken out of context. It looks like your ordinary student housing complex near the University of Southern California. But because of a racially charged sign, this house landed in extraordinary territory. At the center of a divisive Facebook post by Blacktivist, an account Facebook says was backed by the Russian government. You wrote a story. It's your picture. Blacktivist picks up this story, and they didn't even have to come to LA. No. They could find the story, pull it, completely repackage it, and they had a massive audience at the time. I can't even remember how many Facebook followers they had, but I remember it being huge. We'll come back to this post in a minute because it gives us clues about Russia's alleged use of social media to meddle in U.S. politics. And it illustrates the challenge tech companies face in flagging misinformation and images, which were central to Russia's campaign, according to a recent indictment issued by special counsel Robert Mueller. But first, here's the backstory. This Blacktivist post all started with a real event. USC student Tiana Lowe spotted a racist sign while walking to class last spring. It had a Confederate flag drawn on the bottom and said, no black people allowed. So you took a picture of it? Yeah, I took a picture of it. I went up there, I told them, I'm like, whoever did this, I don't know if you guys are being pranked, I don't know if someone in the house put it up, but you guys should definitely take this down. The USC Department of Public Safety, which has security cameras around the neighborhood, found that the sign was placed there by an African-American neighbor who was not enrolled at the university. We were unable to find the neighbor to get a comment. But a DPS spokesman tells the Wall Street Journal that the man admitted to putting the sign up after being denied entry to a party at the house. DPS says it's unclear why he was barred. So here's where the Russian Facebook account comes into play. Tiana, who describes herself as a conservative libertarian student journalist, wrote a quick post about the incident, questioning whether it was a hate hoax. The story appeared on the college news site The Tab, which is partly funded by News Corp, the owner of the Wall Street Journal. Then, something strange happened. Within one day, her photo was uploaded by the Blacktivist Facebook page. It had clearly been framed and repackaged as an act of white supremacy rather than a hate crime hoax. What else sticks out to you about this? I knew this was my photo. This was such a There's distinctive no sign. No doubt. I mean, you can like compare it side by side. Look closely at these two images and you'll notice a number of significant differences. In the Facebook page's caption, the words hate hoax were removed entirely. So was any mention of the hashtag MAGA, which was also scrubbed from the original image of the real sign. The photo was darkened and cropped, cutting out information that identifies the property, like the leasing office phone number. A Blacktivist watermark is added to the lower right-hand corner, and the text omits information she originally wrote about the neighbor who DPS said was caught putting up the sign. And speaking of DPS, Blacktivist describes them as a leading project management and engineering company. DPS is widely known on college campuses as the Department of Public Safety. At the bottom, the Blacktivist post added commentary that appears aimed at stirring up emotions surrounding racial issues. Look around my people. I don't know, just like the way that was written was weird. Is this the country our ancestors died for? Did you think this was written by an American when you first read it? I thought that it was, but I mean, my mind definitely didn't go to foreign adversary trying to sow dissent in America. We asked Harvard's first draft news researcher, Claire Wardle, about this visual post and others like it. So one of the reasons that these kind of agents of disinformation like to just upload things organically is they don't want you actually clicking out and doing lateral searches. They want you just to accept what you're seeing. And that's why they're so powerful and they're so dangerous as vehicles for disinformation. Facebook, Twitter and Google are taking steps to root out fake accounts and fake news on their platforms. Facebook plans to expand a fact-checking program to include doctored images and videos, not just links, according to a company spokesman. Fake accounts also perpetuate a lot of the false news, and so the first line of defense is going after fake accounts. So we're investing in machine learning heavily in automation because that's how we're going to find these things faster. When the Wall Street Journal reached out to Facebook for comment on this specific incident at USC, Facebook pointed us to this comment. Disinformation we, we think of as uh, Inaccurate information spread with malicious intent by a foreign actor, and that would not be permitted on our platform. We don't want foreign actors masquerading as something they're not. Facebook deactivated the Blacktivist account over the summer. But Wardle and other researchers say that tech companies haven't found an effective way to deal with images containing misinformation. 
And with two-thirds of Americans getting some of their news on social media, some people fear that misleading images pose a major challenge to our democracy. We haven't seen any developments in this visual space, and, and that's why we're seeing so much more of it as well, because those people are trying to circulate this disinformation know nobody's really looking at this, nobody's really flagging it, and so they see this as an opportunity to spread disinformation. Visuals are also more viral than text posts, which may explain why Tiana saw thousands of people liking and interacting with the Blacktivist post shortly after it was published. So how did you feel when you saw this post? I was mad, but I mean, I wasn't surprised. And the second that I saw the, the CNN alert that Blacktivist had been a Russian account, it immediately clicked. It made everything make sense. It's sad. It's more than anything, it's sad.